Welcome to a new scented video. I'm Stella and today I want to share with you my thoughts on the Killian bottles that I have in my collection. I do not have all of the Killian perfumes, just want to make this clear. I do have six different Killian perfumes and one refill for one of my favorite ones. So I'll tell you about it when we get there. Uh, I just want to start by saying that I do love uh, all of my Killian perfumes and uh, there are no perfumes that I dislike in this, even though I'm ranking them from uh, my most favorite uh, to, from my least favorite to my most favorite, just to make things a bit more fun and difficult for me. So I will kind of add this ranking element to tell you which ones I like more than the others. And uh, I think that will be fun thing to do. So let's get started. Starting off at number six, I have Good Girl Gone Bad. And this one is a beautiful white floral perfume. If you are on the market for a good Osmanthus perfume, something very fresh and light, this one is an interesting one to check out. And this perfume is a pretty white floral, so it features also tuberose, jasmine, amber, but the star for me is Osmanthus. And what this, to my nose, is a beautiful, very almost girly, but not immature in any way. It is really, really feminine perfume and quite inoffensive. So I imagine this one as an easy reach when you are not sure what to wear. Um, this could go to any occasion. It is really pretty and I also find that it sticks really well to, to fabric so it will last on you and on your clothes really long time. Uh, why I rank it in my number six is because this is more like a freshy in a way and I as a personal style just prefer much more uh, warm, sweet, uh, deeper even gourmand perfumes so it's just not my typical scent but it is a very good one and another thing is when I bought it I did get it blindly so I wasn't sure exactly what I'm gonna get but um, I was really intrigued by the name a good girl gone bad and uh, a little bit underwhelmed by what's in the bottle based on the title so there isn't anything you know sultry or sexy or kind of like risky about this perfume it is just a very wearable white floral so a little bit of a miss there but of course you know the name <laughs> sells itself so this one is a really good uh, pick for the lovers of white florals who want something really pretty and inoffensive at number five i have intoxicated which is a very kind of interesting take on coffee and uh, cardamom combination. So we do have uh, coffee, cardamom, nutmeg and cinnamon in this one. And this is more in my wheelhouse. It's a bit deeper, a little bit sweeter, but it's not going in any gourmand category. This is staying very true to coffee. So it a little bit feels like I have spilled coffee on my shirt when I wear this. <laughs> it is really tasty in that way and I do really like it. And sometimes it's playing tricks on my mind because I'm thinking that I really spilled coffee <laughs> on me and people might think so. But it does have a very nice um, spicy undertone to it. I can definitely sense the cinnamon uh, and the cardamom. The cardamom well, way more than the cinnamon. So. It does smell like a cinnamon bun and coffee kind of combination, but without sweetness. So it is a little bit sweet, but it's not this kind of a sickly, you know, cinnamon bun kind of a realistic cinnamon bun, but it is quite delicious. And um, I do really like this one. So it is on number five. On number four in my collection, I have this one with the long names <laughs> and this is Princess, really chunky uh, cap. Uh, this one is from the Sephora collection and it is so far mm, the favorite one that I've smelled and um, it is a really girly scent. Uh, it is for the fans of a little bit sweeter perfumes. Uh, it's got notes of ginger, uh, green tea, 
marshmallow, benzoin, lots of different things going on. But altogether, it is a kind of a fluffy, sweet scent, uh, more on the gourmand side, but it is a little bit, um, not like a sticky sweet. So there is a transparency in this perfume and it's very likable, uh, almost edible. And um, you can tell that I like this type of scents. I have this initial reaction when I first smelled it in the shop uh, that I've smelled this kind of scent profile before, of course, because it's a gourmand, but um, it is kind of in my mind something like a diet version of Britney Spears Fantasy, which I used to wear a long time. <laughs> I've gone through some bottles of um, this perfume, so um, it reminded me in the flirtiness and kind of the mood, but it is way less sweet and doesn't have the tartness of the lychee which uh, Fantasy has. So it's just kind of like a throwback to this perfume, but it doesn't smell at all the same. It kind of just the mood um, of this reminded me, but this is much more elevated and way less sweet. So for the fans of gourmands and sweet, innocent, kind of cuddly perfumes, this one is a very good one to try. I have heard rumors that this one might be discontinued and um, if someone can please confirm in the comments if it is true and if the whole line is being discontinued or just this one because I don't know where these rumors are coming from and uh, <laughs> I even had like a comment on one of my videos of a viewer who was also kind of worried that this is uh, going out uh, and maybe the whole line so if if someone can give a bit more reliable information on that one I would really appreciate it so that we know if we should stock up or not <laughs> but this was number four princess on number three, I do have this super beautiful one. This is Rolling in Love, and I do have a full review on my channel. And this is the ultimate super pretty feminine perfume. This isn't girly, this is just very uh, sexy feminine perfume without being uh, too deep or like sultry in a way. So this one uh, has very interesting notes. Uh, it does have iris and almond. And then it's got a uh, tonka bean in tuberose vanilla, but um, they are meshed so well together that it doesn't smell like a tuberose perfume or, you know, typical white flower. So it does have a very yummy edge to it. And I think uh, the almond is very d predominant in this one. It does smell like a delicious almond cookie to me, but it is, it does smell gourmand, but uh, it goes way beyond that, so it, it does play um, on the a little bit of a floral side and really um, kind of, I don't know how to even uh, explain this, the, its texture is fluffy but it does have a kind of like a crumbly vibe to me, it's so weird in my head, but yeah, it's like a dusting of almond powder or something like that. It doesn't smell powdery at all. I don't know where my mind is going, but it is just um, really, really beautiful and feminine. And um, yeah, it's quite edible without being a sickly sweet or without being um, deep gourmand perfume. So uh, this one is quite versatile as well. I see this as a date scent, as something to wear, um, you know, going to do something fun like a shopping or if you just want to smell really, really yummy. I hate that word. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to smell delicious and feminine and definitely not immature because this is more like a feminine scent. This is not a little girl's perfume um, as the previous one was quite, um, you know, in this type of vibes. This one is definitely a sexy woman perfume. So Rolling in Love and number three from my Killian collection. And now it starts to get a bit ridiculous because I've been speaking so much about these perfumes, <laughs> the, the top two on my channel. Can you tell which one is number one? I don't know. Let me know if it surprised you, uh, if you've watched some of my other videos. But if you have, you will know that I adore love. Don't be shy. And it comes in this uh, typical white bottle and I love the color of the juice. It's kind of like a coral, coral uh, orangey pink sort of scent. And this one is an absolute love for the gourmand lovers. I describe this as an orange blossom uh, marshmallow. It does have notes of caramel, uh, sugar, all different types of flowers and 
lots of notes actually, surprisingly lots of notes. Uh, neroli, orange blossom, but in the end it does smell really really girly, so this one is another one of the girly ones, and really sweet without being like super cloying, so it, because it does have this transparent vibe about it, really uh, fluffy texture to it, uh, it does never go like a sticky sweet and cloying and overbearing because it, it is so transparent in a way. And it's really addictive, I can't stop smelling this uh, paper. And this is the one that I actually got a refill for because I was afraid that I'm going fast through it and I need to pace myself, so I didn't want to feel um, that kind of pressure <laughs> that I can't use it. And yes, this one is definitely one that I reach for when I want to feel good, I need like a comfort, something that makes me feel really uh, pretty and happy. This is like a really, uh, it seems to me that Orange Blossom has this um, power on me because um, other Orange Blossom heavy perfumes like Safanat uh, from Perfumes de Marley and uh, Memo uh, Granada, they also have the same uh, fluffy orange blossom sweet type of vibe and this is definitely uh, one of my top 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 uh, Killian perfumes. Uh, it had a bit of a fight with the number one but in the end the number one won so let's get to that one. And in number one I don't know I am surprised as well a little bit because I've loved Love Don't Be Shy for so long time but it seems that this one came in really fast and it was an instant love at first sniff. So again, this is the gorgeous Angel's Share and it quickly became my favorite Killian perfume. I think that was like a huge hit for them, a big money maker, I assume. Um, this perfume is worth the hype, in my opinion. I know, hype train is going with full speed on this one and I'm jumping on it, I'm sorry. This is the most beautiful, edible, Oh, it's so addictive. It is this irresistible um, cognac with cinnamon, with uh, caramel and tonka, and uh, also it got oak notes, so it's, um, you know, the, the cognac in the, in the oak barrels kind of vibe. But it is so addictive. It makes me feel like Christmas all the time because it does have, um, to me, like an apple pie, boozy, boozy apple pie kind of vibe. I would eat this if I could, <laughs> if I have this in front of me and there is an apple pie that tastes the way this one smells, I would eat this. So incredibly irresistible, warm, very delicious. And uh, I just find myself being addicted to this one. I think the tonka bean gives it a very nice roundness and kind of almost taste a quality that you could taste the perfume in a way with the way it smells. It's really like a dessert, but it is not sweet. So, I mean, how, to, how do I say that it's not sweet? It does smell sweet, but the sweetness doesn't come from like sugary things. It's um, It does have a nice balance between the woods and uh, the booziness. It's all blended so well that nothing sticks out. It's really round and just like a freaking cloud of amazing, tasty, delicious things. Um, when I bought this one, um, the inside of the box was sprayed with uh, the same scent and just, it smelled like expensive, you know, rich people <laughs> with very delicious perfume. That's how I felt when I smelled it. I was like, wow, this is so fancy and irresistible. Like I couldn't stop sniffing it. And um, yeah, here we are now. Uh, number one, we have Angel's Share. I bet no one is surprised because I've been raving about this for since I got it. So I'm really sorry if I, you know, go in overboard with this one, but I just really love it. So yeah, there you have it. These are my uh, six perfumes from Killian ranked uh, in a way that um, I like them. So let me know in the comments which one is your favorite Killian. I have not tried, you know, they're a bit darker perfumes like the... Um, what was it? The Black Phantom and then there was the Back to Black. So these are two that I'm interested to trying, but I'm afraid if they're going too masculine. So if you have them, uh, 
let me know if you think I'm going to enjoy them. And uh, yes, so thank you so much for watching. This was all from me for today. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.